Okay, the red light's flashing on my iPhone, and uh, that means that uh, we're back to another high production values you've come to expect from SAS TV. Um, but of course, it's not about the values, it's about the stories. I'm here with Sabrina Farmer at Google, and um, summarize what you do here. <laughs> um, I manage the Gmail team at Google. We do site reliability, and we're responsible for our Gmail's availability worldwide. So no pressure. <laughs> no, just, just, uh, just a couple you know, of tens millions of millions, people. hundreds yeah. of millions of people relying on you and your team. Yes. And the reason that I'm here with Sabrina is she gave a really excellent talk at the Usenix conference a month or two ago, um, talking about some challenges that, uh, you know, from her point of view that she's faced as a woman in computer science, but I think are faced by so many of us in computer science that I wanted to capture some of it on video. Um, one of the things that you mentioned in your talk is you originally not only did you not intend to get a computer science degree, you originally were not even thinking of going to college. So what, what happened there? What changed your mind? <laughs> um, yeah, that's true. I didn't come from a family where a lot of people went to college, um, so that didn't seem like a natural thing. I just wanted to like move out, have my own apartment. That was sort of my biggest goal. Um, and then you sort of get out and you, you have to start working and you realize it's actually really hard you know, to not have a college degree in the um, current economy and, you know, world we live in. And so I did, I went to uh, college registration with a friend of mine, and it was such a different atmosphere than I had ever been exposed to, and it was really exciting and new ideas and energy. And so I said, oh, maybe I should do this. And I started looking through the catalog. And I was like, what could I do? You know, it was like business uh, didn't really seem like me, and you know, medical didn't really seem like something I could do, and, you know, computer science was there, and, you know, I, I was never intimidated by computers, and I felt like, you know, you have your computer class in high school, and I had passed it, so I was like, oh, this is probably a good idea for me, <laughs> so, you know, I didn't, I wasn't intimidated by it, so I went ahead, and, and that's what I registered for. <laughs> and some number of years later, you're, you know, at one of the most high-profile software companies, and, you know, working with people who are dedicated and brilliant, and you, you made some great comments in your talk about what's called the imposter syndrome, yeah. and you know, kind of how you confronted that and had to deal with it. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, it's funny just hearing you say, oh, here's all these things that you've accomplished and all of this, and it, it's kind of strange to hear someone say that about me, right? Because I often focus on what I'm not doing as opposed to what I am doing. Um, so, yeah, I. Well, um, I guess one of the things that, that came across for me in your talk is the sense of, you know, you, you, it's easy to get thrust into these positions with people who are doing all this stuff around you and kind of feeling, you know, are you, I don't know, measuring up to the standards that, that your organization expects or that your coworkers expect. I mean, I know I've, you know, I've pretty much felt like that in every computer science job I've been in because I've had the good fortune to be surrounded by smart people. Yeah, I think that, you know, I never really looked at what I was doing and thought that I was, you know, at the top or, you know, the best at anything that I was doing. And someone actually referred me to the imposter syndrome, which was research done actually a really long time ago. And they were like, you need to read this because you never think about what you're accomplishing. And so I read that article and it was, it was, um, it was an interesting paper, right? The paper is actually about it's focused on women, very accomplished women, who attribute their success to something external instead of, you know, what they're doing for themselves and, and what their own abilities are. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, there's a name associated with it, you know, it's not really um, something, it's not really that I'm not doing it, it's just this perception that I have. And so I started to figure out how to deal with these moments where you're just like, I don't fit in, I don't belong here, uh, someone's going to find me out, right, which is the yeah, imposter. Yeah, we fooled them all. You know, I, they're going to know I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, and so I had come up with these three questions, which I brought up in my talk, is like, one, just really focus on what the problem, what is it that I'm feeling, um, and that is make is triggering me to feel this way. Um, and the next thing is, is, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? It often manifests in a time when someone challenges you to do something really hard, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, can I do it? And you start to freak out, and you're like, they're going to find out. And so you really need to think about, well, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? Like, oh, you fail, maybe, right? It's really sure. maybe. And then the last thing was, 
really focused on on the feelings that I had and is it is it real or is it you know just my perspective right is it just an emotional response to this challenge that I've been given um, or is it that I'm really lacking something that I need because if it's really you're just lacking something that you need to accomplish that prob project you just need to go find that piece go right on, that's the problem that you need to solve and it's probably not it has nothing to do with you right so I think kind of how has your, I don't know, I'll call it your deconstruction of, of how to better confront the imposter syndrome and sort of how to, you know, make it not be an issue. Um, how has that affected the way that you deal with, you know, work life balance kinds of things? And, you know, has it made a difference and, you know, not focusing on what you're not doing gives you more time to focus on yourself or? Um, I think one of the things that's helped the most is to sort of learn how to verbalize it, you know, and tell people that this is, you know something you're going through and um, get their support right like I think in general just getting some reassurance helps a lot um, but yeah I do use this process for a lot of things right it's just not about the technical problem that I'm working on at the moment right uh, I use this sort of story I, I've become accustomed because now I have this process to work through these things mm -hmm. that I don't think I can do um, I've started to apply it to other areas right so I once said Someone told me they were doing a triathlon. I was like, oh my God, I could never do a triathlon. And then that became a trigger for me. Hmm. Like, right, well, why, right? What are those so three what, things? what are you missing? Right, so then I signed up and did a triathlon, right? And all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, I couldn't do another one, you know, and I actually did another one. And, you know, I think that happens for everything, right? Like, if I, it's kind of a trigger if I say something's impossible, if I say I can't do it, then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, well, you need to test yourself and... And well, you know, I, I think know it's, it's true. really interesting that you put it that way because I think a thing that engineers do is we, we take things that emerge from the need to deal with something at work and then we find ways to use them for non-work related things. So maybe I'll go out and do a triathlon. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. but the, the Sabrina Farmer method for overcoming any <laughs> obstacle. Um, I guess the, the last thing I wanted to elicit from you is, is when you gave your talk, you also asked if there were people in the audience, uh, women primarily, but uh, if they had, you know, any kind of a story that, that resonated with anything you said. And I remember that there was one that uh, impressed well, both of us, I think, very deeply. You were there, and I just watched it afterward on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But um, if you're comfortable talking a little bit about that story, I thought it was particularly apt. Right. So at the end of my talk, um, I ended the talk really trying to encourage the women and all the attendees to sort of reach out and mentor and like share your story with people so I challenge the audience to you know stand up and, and share a story because sharing your experience can really inspire other people or help them identify for themselves the same feelings that they might have been having and an Iraqi woman stood up and, and told her story about coming to the US for a temporary program at, at Harvard and um, the war broke out and she was sort of stranded here and she had to figure out what to do and so she she joined a program at Harvard and after a year you know you had to take a test in order to move on and, and she didn't pass the test and that um, you know she shared her story it was really this this great story and then after the talk was over she came over to me and she said you know I don't really share that story with anyone because I feel so much shame and I, at first I didn't understand because I had just heard her talk and it, it had been really inspiring um, to me and, and you could tell from the audience that they were also inspired by it. And then I realized that, oh, she didn't share it because she felt shameful that she didn't pass that test. And to me, I didn't pick up on that at all because to me the shame would have been if she hadn't tried again because she goes on to say that, you know, she convinced people that they should give her another chance and, and then she later passed it the second time. And I think that, um, you know, I had never really shared my journey either, and I didn't really equate it to shame, but, you know, when she mentioned this to me, I was like, that's probably what it was, right? It was this fear that people would judge you, um, and it turned out to be an irrational fear, like, you know, not everyone has that same emotional response to something that's happened to you, and I think that's the core of what the imposter syndrome is. Any parting words, advice for, you know, ambitious computer scientists, women or otherwise, that uh, might be struggling with this? Yeah, I think, you know, it's really hard to say, you know, just, just believe that you can, right? Because that's so simple to say, but it's really hard. I think don't get discouraged and try not to put the limits on yourself, you know? I think um, we're all going to have limits on what we do and 
you know, you have to overcome them, but don't place them before they actually manifest. So okay. hang in there. Uh, you know. And I think I remember even the title of your talk was something like overcoming my biggest obstacle, which was myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's about like not creating your own roadblocks. And there you have it. You have Sabrina to thank for Gmail <laughs> and for some great words of advice for uh, all of us working in, in tough fields like this. Thanks very much, Sabrina. Thanks, Sabrina. You rock and roll. <laughs>